Hi, everyone. Welcome to Domain Sherpin. Thank you for tuning in to the podcast with the best domain name and digital asset content in the world. Today's episode is a down the rabbit hole where Shane, Drew, and I talk to the one and only Mike Carson about his new Spaces protocol, which is a naming protocol consisting of scalable and permissionless identities built on Bitcoin. Since this show is a down the rabbit hole, as we say on Domain Sherpa, all roads lead to domains. And in the reverse, our work with domains has us venturing all the time into different areas, hence the jump down the rabbit hole. So this is our tech adjacent digital asset pop culture tangent positive podcast with some domain stuff thrown in for good measure and today's show definitely fits the bill for those of you who don't know after selling park.io to dynadot in october of 2023 mike shifted his focus to his new venture impervious and its spaces protocol project spaces is a naming protocol that leverages the existing infrastructure and security of bitcoin without requiring a new blockchain or any modifications to bitcoin itself spaces serve as community identifiers that are distributed through an auction process built using existing Bitcoin scripting capabilities. So on the show, we talk a ton about that, along with a big discussion about Bitcoin, Web3 domains, censorship, free speech, and decentralization. We also talk about this week's solar eclipse. All that and more is coming up now on this episode. And remember, if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, you can also watch the video version on DomainSherpa.com and on our YouTube channel at DS.TV. You can also listen to the shows on Apple and Spotify and other podcast platforms as well. So please make make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button and all that good stuff everywhere that you can and help Domain Sherpa grow the pie. Also, we integrate our shows with Muse.ai, which provides search functionality along with the transcripts as well. So definitely check all that out. Big shout out to our sponsor, Dan.com, the number one place in the world to buy and sell your domains with a special platform made for domain investors. And special shout out to our own business, Media Options, the number one domain brokerage in the world, specializing in domain acquisition, sales, and appraisals. Find out more at MediaOptions.com where you can also sign up for our newsletter for the best domain names and domain opportunities available in the market every week and also featuring key insights and other helpful information related to branding, naming, and of course, domain investing. And remember, now is the time to go and register for NamesCon if you haven't already. NamesCon is happening June 5th to the 8th at the Omni Hotel in Austin, Texas, and the Media Options team will be live on location. So go to namescon.com and check that out. With that, it's now time to get into this episode of Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. So let's go and jump down the rabbit hole. What's up, Sherpa Network? Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Jonathan Tenem. I'm a.k.a. JT, a.k.a. J on, a.k.a. Sherpa Winfrey, and I'm the host and producer of Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. Today's show is part of our Down the Rabbit Hole series, so welcome to the Tea Party. As we say on Domain Sherpa, all roads lead to domains, and in the reverse, our work, in us in our work with domains has us venturing all the time into different areas and topics, some domain-related, others that aren't, hence the jump down the rabbit hole. Big shout-out to Jen Sale. She was actually one of the founding co-hosts host of this show, where we would describe it as a tech-adjacent digital asset pop culture tangent positive podcast with some domain stuff thrown in for good measure. Today's topic actually is going to be kind of sort of domain related, but definitely going off the rails. I don't want to say off the rails, but definitely down the rabbit hole some. And uh, But I'm going to get into that. We've got a super special guest, first time on the show since I've been the host. So I'm going to introduce him last as we do. So really quick, let me go ahead and introduce over to my right. I got my boy Shane Culture, a.k.a. Sugar Shane, a.k.a. Honey Shane, a.k.a. Mike Rowe, a.k.a. Blame It on the Shane, a.k.a. House the Shane, aka the culture personality, doing it for the culture. What's up, dude? How are you? I'm good. I just uh, drove across country to get here. I, I've, right. been in Cal- I've been in Colorado all winter, so well, it's nice to see sunshine. 70 degrees is beautiful. Love I just it. don't know Love why it. you couldn't have stopped somewhere to get full totality for the eclipse. You know, I, I mean? did. That's why I came here. I literally came the day before. <laughs> <laughs> Not full get totality. To yeah, We're yeah, gonna but... get to that. We're gonna get to that. All right. On my lower right, we have our special guest, so I'm going to introduce him last. So really quick, let me go ahead. Not that everybody else isn't special. You guys are all special in your own way. (laughs) Below me, I got my boy Andrew Rosner, a.k.a. Morpheus, a.k.a. the Dirk Diggler of Digital Assets, a.k.a. Bob Lee Swagger the Sniper, a.k.a. Drew. Drew got what I need. Never going to give Drew up. Cancel Adams, Greybeard, the Domain Pirate in the building. What's up, dude? How are you? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm, uh, you know. So did you guys did you guys have the did you guys have the eclipse in Lisbon? Is it was it No, we don't do that shit here. 
<laughs> you are 20, 20, 2026. It's going, it's yeah. going to Spain. Yeah, 2026, we'll get our eclipse on, but you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, let's get yeah. it. Let's get it. Sounds like a road trip. Sounds like a road trip to me. Um, all right. To my lower right, we've got our special guest today, the one and only Mike Carson, a.k.a. Here's Mikey, a.k.a. Carson City, a.k.a. Mr. Robot, a.k.a. Magnus Carlson, a.k.a. Kevin Micknick, a.k.a. What's Cooler Than Cool, Ice Code. You know what I'm saying? Get it? But uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Mike, serial entrepreneur, software developer, uh, founder of Park.io, File.io, WiseHive, um, Park.io was sold to Dynadot back in October of 2023. Uh, now his new current venture is Impervious and Spaces Protocol, which is what we're going to talk about. He is one of those guys in the space who is the kind of guy who makes smart people feel dumb. You know what I'm saying? And uh, even in putting the bio together, I was like, man, I can't even talk about half this stuff because I don't understand it, which is why having you on the show to talk about this stuff today is going to be great. So uh, I know you've been on the show before, but this is the first time with myself as host. And uh, so very much appreciate you being here. And uh, so welcome. And uh, how are you doing? Thanks. Thanks. That's very nice intro. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. It's great to be here. It's great to be here again. Um, I'm excited to talk about this stuff. Yeah, let's get it, man. Let's get it. Um, so, you know, post park, you know, so you sold park. Uh, I thought, I thought Dynadot as the, um, you know, as the buyer was an excellent fit. You know, I, I love what they're doing. Big shout out to Todd and the team over there. Um, and, uh, and then, so let's get right into it and talk about impervious and spaces protocol and everything else. Um, was it something that you were already working on? And then part of the reason why you moved, you know, sold park to kind of move on, was it the kind of thing where, you wrapped up park and we're like, all right, now what, like how, how did some of that sort of happen as far as the stuff that you, you know, are doing now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah. So I, you know, I started park.io in 2014 and then um, I was in, I got into Bitcoin in 2013. And so I got it. I was like, these two worlds were coming together, like, uh, you know, domains. I really got to know the domain world. And then I was also really getting to know Bitcoin and, you know, then I realized, you know, like I realized domains are digital assets. They, they, you know, should be on the blockchain that if they were, you know, if a blockchain was around before domains came out, you know, I think they would have been created on, on the blockchain. And, um, and so anyway, I think it's, it's something that I had this really strong conviction about that, like, it's inevitable. It's too valuable for the world that, um, you know, domains on a blockchain, it's, it's just too valuable that it's, it's inevitable. It's, it's so valuable that it's inevitable. So I, mm -hmm. you know, and, and at first I, you know, there's other things, there's like Namecoin and there's all the, you know, ENS and Handshake, then Handshake came along. And so, you know, I worked with those, those for a while. And then eventually, uh, you know, we wanted to come up with, I realized, you know, because I'm, I believe in Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin is the strongest by far proof of work blockchain. It's like the most secure thing. It's like it should be anchored in Bitcoin. And so we decided to create this protocol, um, the Spaces protocol, on on Bitcoin. So that's all right. That's so it. before we get into that, then the um, so you, I mean, Drew's obviously a Bitcoin maxi, right? So are you guys like? You guys on the same like group threads and and whatnot, like the you know like how's that think, how's that work for you? All? Yeah, I think I mean I, pretty similar. I mean I I agree, you know I to me right now it's like all Bitcoin. I mean I, I'm open to other things if something else seems like it has you know it, it could work. I could you know then maybe, but like it's hard because well so <laughs> I get I mean I think we're similar like. For me, it's like proof of stake. I don't know. You know, it's really complicated. It doesn't, to me, it hasn't proved itself. I mean, I, I'm skeptical of it. I'm, I'm skeptical of proof of stake. Like proof of work, I, you know, we know works and Bitcoin's the strongest by far. Like it has the most hash power. It's the most secure. So it's like, if you're going to have a proof of work, if you're going to have something on a blockchain and you want it to be anchored in a, the most secure thing, it's like, why not put it in Bitcoin? I, so, but I'm, you know, I'm open to other things. If there's something else that seems like it could work, then I would look at it. But, you know, it's like right now. I think, yeah, I think it's really yeah. simple. Like if you're talking about money, then 
you either just don't understand the point of a blockchain to begin with, um, or you would only ever want your money on a proof of work mechanism. In fact, it just doesn't even make sense for money to be on anything but a proof of work mechanism. I think about it as like, oh, money has evolved from, you know, seashells and rocks to gold to now Bitcoin, right? And it's like, why? Well, because we have a physical world and that physical world is constrained by finite resources. And all of those resources can be boiled down to one common denominator, and that is Bitcoin. Uh, sorry, that is energy. And because of the laws of thermodynamics, we know that we cannot create more energy. We cannot remove energy from the system, and we can basically just change the form of energy. And so, you know, I can take this chair and I can burn it and turn it into energy. And I can make a conscious decision about is the value, the utility value of this chair more valuable as a chair or can I burn it and the conversion rate into usable energy is high enough that it makes sense to turn it into energy, right? And that is basically the math that ultimately most people aren't thinking about today, but ultimately becomes a forced conversion for every human being in every decision they make, let's say 20 years from now, whereby everything is relative to Bitcoin, meaning, okay, uh, I'm McDonald's and we're going to produce a cheeseburger. Well, even better, I'm Coca-Cola, okay? And I can take this subsidized water and subsidized sugar and subsidized corn syrup and subsidized aluminum and subsidized electricity and subsidized diesel that goes into my trucks to drive, you know, transport this stuff around the country. Um, and that has all, those are all resources that have a conversion, right? And I can turn them into a Coca-Cola or I can allocate that in my treasury to Bitcoin, right? And so what we're going to do is force efficiency because you have a finite number of resources. We have an economy that seems to think that growth at any cost is the only way forward. In fact, if we're not growing, literally this whole thing implodes the house of cards. And so... The only way to change that and get it onto a sustainable path is for the finite resources to be reflected in the economic structure. And Bitcoin force functions that. Bitcoin forces you to decide, is this resource better utilized being turned into some kind of product or being turned into energy that can be stored in the form of Bitcoin? and so it, it, it basically proof of work binds the physical world to the digital yeah. world. There's a there's an immutable bound uh, 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 bridge between the two that simply doesn't exist. Proof of anything else? <laughs> proof of anything yeah, else? Yeah, no. And so what? So proof. So Mike, proof. So proof of stake. What is so? What's the you know the dummies sort of explanation of that versus the way Drew explained proof of work? Yeah, I mean, proof of one vote in one vote, basically. Yeah, which it's force, like which is a force function of centralization. You're really forcing centralization. Well, yeah, go, ahead and let, go ahead and explain it for the average person. <laughs> the difference, well, just the difference between proof of work and proof of stake in like Ethereum converted over. People knew it converted, but they didn't know what that meant. So, yeah. With proof of work, you're like securing the blockchain with like what Drew said with with energy, with hash, you know, like ha computing hash, like you're, you have to solve these math problems. And so you need like really fast computers when you need energy. And so like, it's, it's all secured by like a, it ties, yeah, like what Drew said, it ties the physical world to the digital world with like energy. And so, um, so you can't, you know, there's no shortcuts, like you have to, yeah. it's all about hash power. But with proof of that's stake, actually the best, most important phrase in the whole conversation is there's no shortcut. There's no cheating. It's impossible. You, 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 it's literally the definition of proof of work. You have to prove you've done the work. And the only way to do the work is to spend the power. And proof of stake is 
it's more it, you secure the blockchain with uh with like tokens it's like who you know and i you know honestly it's a really complicated process and a lot of people don't it's you know even yeah it's, it's like the proof of work is the carrot you're securing it in order to gain a reward and proof of stake is the stick you're putting up like an ante okay table stakes it's literally staking your coins okay and if you cheat you run the risk of losing those coins by saying oh this is a valid block or this transaction actually happened but actually it was a double spend and so then basically the network takes your stake so it's basically a, a punitive form of uh and ETH switch from what to what? It, it switched work, from yeah, stake. work to stake. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that means that. So when that happened, would that would would it be fair to say that at that point you guys became less bullish on Ethereum because of that? Or yeah, I mean, I personally, yeah, proof of stake, like proof of work, is so simple. It's like really simple to understand. It's like basically, you know, you're just trying to solve these math problem and you and you have to guess random numbers and so you just need a lot of computers guessing random numbers and it's like really simple it's like you just need energy you just need to guess these numbers and so then you, you solve it, the you problem know, if you do it, yeah you get the but proof of proof of stake is like this huge complicated thing that so many you know even like really in, like de core developers it's like you know one problem comes up they fix that but then other things come up you know it's like to me i mean it's kind of you know it's worked so, so far but like to me i don't understand you know i don't really understand <laughs> and it's, yeah and, so it's, and i mean and also it's also is is it a decentralization sort of is there a difference as far as proof of work is is you know bitcoin truly decentralized whereas almost everything else at this point is becoming more and more centralized like solana you know they got to have the devs got to get together and turn the shit off and on you know at the same time when they have to reset the network or whatever and uh you know so it's proof yeah. of stakes more centralized well you know it's interesting i mean there's different ways of centralizing things like um you know there's miners like some miners have a huge percent of the hash power so you know it gets tricky but in a mm. uh but it's they also have surge pricing that's the difference too is when they can when it gets congested on the ethereum network they just keep raising the gas fees Mm -hmm. um and trying yeah. to slow down the amount of people doing it well and also w before ethereum switched from proof of work to proof of stake you know they were there's so it was the blockchain was so large that you couldn't like it was not really feasible for somebody to have the whole blockchain on their you know computer like you need a specialized system and like you couldn't sync the blockchain like it, it just kept producing more blocks like uh so it was so you didn't have so it wasn't really like uh it wasn't really decentralized because you couldn't verify things on your own you know with bitcoin you can because the blocks you know there's the blocks are small you can sync it you know pretty pretty quickly relatively quickly so anybody can do it like on yeah. their computer so yeah there's different like centralized there's different ways that things can be centralized but yeah bitcoin's definitely like it's the most competitive and you know, there, it has issues with centralization, but it's definitely by far, in my opinion, the best, like most decentralized. At least yeah, there. and that's a perfect now segue, sort of, you know, just kind of an intro summary for folks to just sort of, you know, kind of lay the the context of some of what you're doing now with, you know, impervious and the naming system, because you because that is is built on blockchain or it utilizes. I'm, I'm sorry, blockchain. Sorry, I'm an idiot, but uh, utilize Bitcoin, right? It's it's on the Bitcoin blockchain as far as what you're trying. And it's, it's, it's like social handles. So how does it work? What are you trying to achieve? Let's, let's get into that stuff. Yeah. So, um, so basically we learned from all these other naming systems that were built like Namecoin, ENS, Handshake, you know, all, all the previous uh, th solutions for this. And, you know, we did it on Bitcoin and we did it, we, we did it in a way that was, you know, I wanted it to be 100% cypherpunk. Um, so what that means is like decentralized, you know, there's no foundation, there's no separate blockchain, there's no separate token, there's no pre-mine, any of that stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it's decentralized, it's, you know, I want it to be 
de decentralized 100 so we designed it that way um so yeah i think it's a i think it's a cool solution and you know i've i've been going around to some bit like bit dev meetups i went to bit dev new york city and bit dev chicago and stuff and it's cool because there's like you know serious bitcoin core developers there and they're they're looking at this and you know they like it so i think it's i th that gives me you know confidence to see these these people like and they they understand that you know it's interesting because you this this is something that i think needs th there's a security risk like bitcoin really relies on uh in some cases like it relies on the domain name system because um and so this and that's a centralized that's that's like a security risk because it's it's centralized in a lot of ways you know like we know there's like i can registries registry operators registrars all the employees at those places governments can seize domains and stuff like that so there you know it's it's a it's a risk it's a uh centralized security risk to rely on uh domain names so um so i think this you know addresses i think it addresses an important security problem for bitcoin itself so and, and a lot of the people there realize that and uh and yeah, we, you know, another thing, a lot of Bitcoin people, um, so yeah, we did a cypherpunk, which, you know, the, the, the Bitcoin community buys into, you know, the, I, mean, I think it's really important, like the ideals, but then also, you know, with the whole ordinals thing, um, you know, some people like don't want a lot of bloat on the blockchain, like a lot of data stored on the, on the block space uh, for like cat jpegs and stuff like that yeah, <laughs> and like you know uh and so you know we designed it really to have a really small footprint you know so it really does not store much data uh, and or take up much of the space but it's anchored in bitcoin so yeah yeah so i think this is super cool and super so impervious is the overarching company right that's the that's the new company uh spaces yeah. is this what you're developing the spaces protocol is effectively this this naming system on bitcoin you know utilizing bitcoin as it exists no modifications needed no new blockchain needing to be developed and, and done in a way to create a small footprint so that like you said you're not bloating the blockchain with a bunch of additional stuff i mean even for ether and for a lot of nft projects they actually store the stuff while it's not on the blockchain it's stored on uh what's the uh a delta us <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. And uh so so for spaces, so when you so it's effectively so it's like ENS kind of like like domain names, right? Like handles. Um, is it like an at something? Like so what would my what would you know what would your name look like if you're gonna select a name that's gonna identify you? Then what does it look like? How do you utilize it? Kind of what are the benefits? You know, let's talk about that kind of stuff and understand some of that. Yeah. So starting so, with like, so what do the names look like? Like, are they, do they look like domains? Is it something dot something or? No. Yeah. That's yeah. These are good questions. So, so, um, so yeah, we, we did design it with, uh, two layers. So there's, it's similar to traditional domains with like top level domains, second level. So the top level we call spaces and then second level is subspaces. And so the, the top level, they you the way that you register like you get a top level domain is a uh, top level space is uh you create an auction on bitcoin and um so there's auctions it's basically like a 10-day auction and it's all determined which names go to auction is determined by like um it's just determined by the market so it's like whatever whichever had the highest bids go to auction so that it you know it gets uh basically there's a pre-auction phase where you can if you want a name like if you want bitcoin if you want the top level space bitcoin you uh create an auction and you place a bid for it let's say okay. you bid one bitcoin and then um every Is that day the, the minimum top... or can i do like if i wanted to initiate yeah. an auction i can do any amount or you can do any amount yeah okay. you can do a small amount yeah and then um what happens is that uh basically the top 10 names so only every day 10 names become available go to the auction phase and the and it's determined by the the 10 names with the highest bids so let's say bitcoin has one bitcoin bid 
and it's one of the top 10. So it goes to auction and then there's a 10 day auction. And so, you know, you just bid and you, you, you try to get the highest bid. Uh, we have a thing at the, at, there has to be 24 hours of no bids at the end in order to win the name. So, okay, so we're uh, not doing a five minute extension. We're doing a 24 man, that's hour. A, that's a long, <laughs> yeah. And so, then, go ahead, keep going. I like Sorry. it though. You know, like for big, big, big people who invest in Bitcoin should have long time horizons. And so, <laughs> you know, we're just, yeah. we're just re- reinforcing that. Yeah. And you know, that's, it's to prevent like sniping, you know, for that. And like mm-hmm. ch- miners could get involved and like try to like get a bid in there. And there it also, it, yeah. And, uh, but actually it also, there's security things like there's like um, a pinning attack in Bitcoin where you can do these things where you string transactions along. So basically it's a security thing. And also like, so anyway, after 24 hours of no bid, if you're the high bidder, you close the auction, you win. So you have Bitcoin, the top level. And then from that point, you can, um, you can sell subspaces on that if you want, or you can do whatever you want. But yeah, you can, if, if you want, you can sell subspaces. And then that's done like a second layer to Bitcoin. And it's done with these zero knowledge proofs. And, uh, it's, it's kind of complex, uh, stuff that even I don't really completely understand. Like this guy, my, my co-founder that I'm working with is like super, technical knows all that stuff and um but but yeah it's done on a second layer and it's uh but it's completely decentralized like a second so so like if i register mike at bitcoin um and and yeah the syntax is at we do it at symbol so it would be instead of like mike dot bitcoin it would be mike at bitcoin so mike mike is this uh, and we did that to like because there's you know uh previous issues with like handshake and stuff like that is like like naming conflicts like what if i have this on yeah 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 what if i have this on handshake but i'm like you know it conflicts with what's on you know i can or another naming system so we did the syntax like that so it it avoids kind of those uh conflicts but so i can register mike at bitcoin as a second um as a subspace and i own that like i completely own that nobody can take it not even if Drew owns Bitcoin, the top level, you know, he can't take away my mic at Bitcoin. Um, even if he loses the keys to his Bitcoin, like the top level or lets it expire or whatever, I still have mic at Bitcoin and it's mine. So, you know, he can't interfere. It's like Wait, independent. But hold on. How does that work? If I were to let the top level expire. Yeah. Then let's say nobody else picked it up. Let's say it's something obscure. Nobody else picks it up. I still have it because I have the certificate. Like you can prove with, so there's with the zero knowledge proofs, you can like prove that I own uh, Mike at Bitcoin. And, is, and, and if you stop committing, so basically you as the top, um, as the space owner have to commit these proofs, these zero knowledge proofs on chain, like every, every regularly to show like who's registered, like which names are registered under you. And, um, you know, if you fail to do that, if you just stop doing that for some reason, I can go on chain and prove that I own, like I can come on chain and prove that I own uh, Mike at Bitcoin. So basically it kind of acts as a top level at that point. If you stop uh, committing the proofs for the subspaces for under Bitcoin, then mm-hmm. uh, we can take it on chain and, uh, and it then it acts as a basically it acts as a top level at that point. You can do the same thing, like you can just renew it and update it the same way. So it exp- so there are so the subspaces there's expire. squatters rights, yeah, like yeah. in New York. Yeah. Do <laughs> yeah. do the subspaces are they operate off of some kind of a renewal? Is that up to the top level owner basically to determine any of those details, or are they all operate yeah. kind of on the same timing? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it's up to the top level uh, owner to do that. Because yeah, if I register Mike at Bitcoin, I pay, you know, Drew uh, for this name, so he gets the revenue for that. And I mean, part of what Impervious is doing is we're gonna 
have like a registry operator. So it's going to be really sure. easy for Drew because this zero knowledge proof stuff, it takes a lot of computation and it's kind of complicated and committing that to on chain and stuff like that. So we're going to have a service where like Drew can say, yeah, sell subspaces for me, you know, and just like, sure. it'll be really easy. And then we'll charge a percentage of that. So like if I register for $10, you know, he gets $8 or whatever. I don't know what it'll be exactly, but, but yeah, and he can determine the price for that and also the renewal and stuff like that super cool so then my guess my question would be what is the so the use is to be able to communicate with other folks on the network or it you know is there are there yeah. websites involved like how to so what it so i ha, let's say i register bitcoin the space as a space and what do i what do i do with it yeah so that's yeah that's a good question and we designed this purposely to be a, a, a general decentralized naming system so so if i have mike at bitcoin like you know it could be used for a, <clears throat> a website you know a browser with a plugin or something or could resolve mike at bitcoin or it could be used for receiving payments um mm -hmm. uh like so you send bitcoin to mike at bitcoin um or it could be used for a noster username or something you know it could be used for a username or in, uh anything really i mean okay it's decentral it's it's just a decentralized naming system yeah so okay very cool um yeah there's a lot to lot to unpack um so how long of a process has it been like how long have you guys been working on this to and how far along and are you know is it, is it live is it you know what's the what's the deal yeah we uh so we've been working on it for like a year um and we we just released the like white paper at spacesprotocol.org um, like a month or two ago. And we also released some code to uh, our GitHub repository. Uh, we're gonna go live on testnet by the end of this month. So um, on the Bitcoin testnet, you'll be able to like open auctions and do everything. And, and we'll uh, you know, do a lot of testing at that point and then if everything goes well, you know, in the next a month after that or two months after that, we hope to go live on mainnet. Um, awesome. So yeah, yeah, I saw on uh, on Twitter on it was CoinList, I think that added you guys to their list of uh, you know notable things to kind of keep an eye on. You know, their 2024 cohort and uh, yeah. feedback was super cool, man. People are like, you know, recognize this is really novel and interesting and. Uh, you know, so as you kind of said, you you know sort of do a bit a little bit of a roadshow, um, and uh, and the feedback's been pretty positive, right? I mean, there's a lot of folks that are kind of interested in what you guys are doing and figuring out how to kind of work with you and that kind of stuff, also. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. I, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, it's it's really fun to <laughs> work on this and like and do it on Bitcoin. You know, it makes a huge difference, like because we were you know, previously Impervious was doing handshake stuff. And when you're working on handshake, it's like a separate blockchain and it's like, there's not a lot built. There's not a huge community, but doing it on Bitcoin, it's like, there's, there's a huge community. There's so much built for it already that it's like, it makes a huge difference. And it's, it's, so it's like, it's, it's really uh, cool to be, do, you know, have a, have this on bitcoin it, it makes a big difference yeah well, yeah i, I think you were, oh yeah go i'll go ahead i don't mean to cut you off no, no go ahead you can yeah go. i was just gonna say i know you were involved in uh, handshake since the main net launch right and uh and it seems like you were able to take a lot of what you saw learned and did with handshake and kind of now it's leveling up right and i feel like we're seeing this shift now also where bitcoin I mean, it's always been the biggest, right? And arguably the best of, of all the, you know, of all crypto. I mean, there's a reason the market cap is what it is compared to everything else. And it's it's the daddy, right? Um, but now we're, you mentioned ordinals before. So let's kind of segue a little bit into that. And this is, and this I want to ask Shane also, um, because it does, you know, we went through this whole phase where it was all NFTs, everything was on ETH, right? Everything was Ethereum. And now, you know, there's been Solana NFTs and stuff like that. And, it seemed like thing that, that, and I don't know if it was a cost, a computing power, or network limitations, or what it was, or chain limitations that were, were, it seemed like 
why weren't we doing NFTs, ordinals, runes, things like that on Bitcoin from the beginning? Like, why was it Ethereum? Oh, and the thing I was thinking of when Drew said it was AWS. Well, was Segwit thinking, I, was what changed, really. And what's that? And I was thinking of IPFS before, by the way, is what I was thinking about, where they store like the files for yeah. NFTs. But yeah. The, um, so, so what changed and, and, you know, and why now? I guess. And then I want to talk a little bit about ordinals and that kind of stuff. And because I think that's super interesting too, because it's not something I've gotten into, but I heard Josh, Josh reason was talking about ordinals on the, uh, the ICA AMA, AMA that he did recently. And uh, it just seems like they're starting to really explode node monkeys and, you know, all that kind of stuff is starting to go kind of crazy on Bitcoin. So. So before we go there and sort of diverge from what the project yeah. is, my skepticism around all forms of blockchain domain, and, and I, I fully understand, you know, sort of the need and the the, the utility uh, to an extent. Um, but my my concern is that without centralized regulation, um, like how, why can't let's say okay so you've got you know your your bitcoin spaces protocol okay so i'm going to launch you know places I, drew and i are going to launch launch places where you can yeah, buy a place launch, and a sub yeah, exactly bitcoin places <laughs> you've got your spaces and somebody else has got their aces and so we 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 launch in you know let's say technologically it's as good same where's it don't we create just to like a tremendous amount of confusion because okay so you launched this like i i don't really believe i think that the whole concept of oh i'm going to be able to resolve a website of this that's buck right so there's like four people on earth that are going to put the the you know browser extension that allow them to resolve your website it, it that's you know it, well here, we here's what I, blockchain yeah. domains for websites that's not what well, well, here yeah identity and 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 wallet address is important but that's where i come into this conundrum so if yeah, you have yeah. multiple let's... protocols on the same blockchain and i want to send so let's say you've got you know your uh you know uh, at bitcoin okay and you've got your subspaces that's mike at bitcoin and then i launched with shane we've got places and we've got you know at bitcoin oh, yeah. on places and then you know, Shane changes his name to Mike, and he wants to have Mike at, you know, Bitcoin on the places protocol. It's also on bo- the Bitcoin blockchain. And then JT wants to send me money, or he wants to send Shane money. How does he say, send Shane money to Mike at Bitcoin and avoid that it goes to you, Mike at Bitcoin, on the same blockchain, but on a different protocol? Yeah. So, I mean, I think, the, you know, a lot of these questions, which are good and legitimate questions, is uh, I think a lot of them can be addressed if you think of it in terms of Bitcoin. It's like you could you could fork Bitcoin, create a new Bitcoin. You could create a thousand Bitcoins. Why? Yeah, but that's not what you're doing, right? You're, you're, you're on well, you're set- blockchain. And I'm saying somebody else launches a, let's say, a, 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 a similar protocol on the Bitcoin blockchain. It uses the same syntax. And so like this was this was where I I but it's but I guess the way that I'm saying is like you could launch you could launch a thousand bitcoins that have the same payment syntax, have the same thing, but like why what makes Bitcoin special? You know, you have you probably had to answer that question when people when when people are skeptical about Bitcoin, you probably had to answer that question. Why is Bitcoin more special than these thousand other other ones? And so, yeah, I mean, to me, it's the same, it's similar, it's a similar question with the naming system. It's like, something's gonna, there's like this decentralized naming is just, is so valuable that it's inevitable and something's gonna become the number one thing. So, hey, here's my shot. Here's our shot at it. Space, the spaces protocol, you know, and if, you know, if it doesn't work out, something will, something's going to. And so this is our shot. And like, eventually, you know, everybody's, it'll just, you know, one will become so popular. It's like ENS too, you know, like right now it's pretty, it's really popular on, on Ethereum. So everybody just knows that's the one to use. So I yeah, think it's just, so, so they have the exact same problem. So like they happen to get lucky and get the ETH 
you know, dot ETH on Handshake, and they happen to get, you know, they made a deal with Unstoppable that Unstoppable won't launch a dot ETH, right? But these are all like freaking handshakes. I think you can't build business that way. Like ultimately, you know, business is war. And so ultimately, like I would do it just for the fuck of it, just to like show everybody how stupid they are. I'd be like, all right, I'm going to fucking launch dot ETH on a new, you know, thing. And, and then, you know, now what? Right? Sue me. Right? What are you going to do? So I, I don't. So I can't. What I can't does is it actually prevent and, and, and believe me i was in your camp 100 percent. i was like decentralization maxi you know whatever i you know forgets this censorship bullshit right but i came to this conclusion because i don't i don't know how i don't see without some kind of central authority i don't see and maybe you could codify the central authority but i don't see how you avoid redundancy and and therefore collisions. And so I, I that's my issue. That's my issue with all blockchain domain protocols or naming protocols is I don't see how you avoid co- uh, uh, collision. It's nice that everybody wants to get together and shake hands and say, oh, I won't do it and use it. But that's not really That's not decentralized. Once you start no, agreeing not, not to do something, like, then you've just it defaults, ruined the it whole defeats process. the purpose. Yeah. And so... I mean, I- I think it's similar to Bitcoin. It's, I mean, like this. It's, it's not because you're you're on. There's hold no on, hold on, hold on but, Drew. Let him. But there's no cent- There's no centralized authority who says Bitcoin is the number. We all have to use Bitcoin as the number one. Like Bitcoin is the money of the internet. There's no centralized authority who says that. And you know there could be a, there is a thousand replicas of Bitcoin out there. So why does everybody use Bitcoin? Why does everybody use Bitcoin? But here's yes. the, the one. Let me put it this way: that has already that's resolved through the protocol itself, in the sense that if I want to send Bitcoin to JT, there's only one network that I can send my Bitcoin on. I can't send my bit. I can't choose to send my Bitcoin. But you could send, send another Bitcoin without using some bridge. You know, I can't send Bitcoin from one blockchain to, you know, to uh, the Namecoin blockchain or to the Litecoin blockchain or to the, you know, Monero or Zcash. I can't. If I send my, I have one Bitcoin. I'm going to send JT one Bitcoin. But you There's can't only send one way for it to go. But, but I think you're one. I, I think you're. You, you, like take a step back you could send these other tokens to each other you could send the bitcoin fork bitcoin two to B- somebody else you could send bitcoin three to somebody else like it so yeah, i can't send bitcoin three to bitcoin two yeah like, you can send three to bitcoin three but you bitcoin can't seven you bitcoin can't seven. send it but you can't send a spaces name to a handshake name it's the same thing i mean i, I think what, the, what what it comes down to no is- but because you're on handshake has its own blockchain now don't get me wrong i actually i i have failed to understand what the utility and i still own probably 1500 of the best handshake extensions but i failed to understand what value they have or utility because um i guess i guess what it comes down to is i think one will become the standard to use just like bitcoin is the standard you know it's the number one i think there will be one naming protocol that is the one that's used you know so i don't disagree Bitcoin. with you but there's always going to be the ankle biter right so you let's say let's say you it's an overwhelming success and i sincerely 100 percent wish that this is a overwhelming success okay so let's just extrapolate out five years from now it's an overwhelming success widespread adoption people love it great and then you know some ankle biter decides he's going to launch you know, he's going to just fork your protocol and he's going to launch places instead of spaces. And it's basically an identical protocol. And now you're both on the Bitcoin blockchain and there can be more than one person that owns the same sub space, sub place and, you know, master place and sub place. They can't, they, they can't. Because we have it's pro, it's a client side consensus protocol, so we ha- our software would not resolve those other names, like the software for Spaces protocol would not it would not recognize those names, it would not unless it followed our protocol. 
you know, unless it was a name, like if no, they but, tried but, to open so I'm less concerned about that and I'm more concerned about payments. So now there's two might get Bitcoin. Okay. On both of them are on the Bitcoin blockchain. Both of them can send and receive Bitcoin and Bitcoin only. And so what stops when, you know, do I have to select your protocol? Are there like, is there a menu of protocols? I'm going to send, you know, right. one Bitcoin to Mike at Bitcoin. And then my wallet is going to say, do you want to send that to the Mike at Bitcoin on the spaces protocol, the Mike at Bitcoin on the places protocol, the Mike at Bitcoin on the, you know, whatever XYZ protocol, like what? No, it'll be. It'll be a standard, so they won't. It won't ask like all these other forks and stuff. Just like when Why? you send, just like when you send Bitcoin, it doesn't say, "Do you want to send it to this fork, this fork, this fork, this fork, or this fork?" Because it's a standard. You know, it'll become the standard, and so everybody. Yeah, just, how does it become a standard? There's nothing. Prov- it's so to centralized. How does it become regardless a standard? Regardless of the adoption, reg- the adoption is almost irrelevant. Regardless of how well adopted it is. In my mind, and I could be wrong, you're way more technical than I am, but in my mind, and this is really the argument that I have against, you know, everything, you know, blockchain naming, is what prevents somebody else from having an identical protocol on the same blockchain? That's where you run into the problem. Same blockchain, identical protocol, both can send and receive Bitcoin. How do I send it to one and not the other? I open my ledger. Well, and I'm, I'm going to go to my ledger. I'm going to open one of my wallet addresses. I pull out one Bitcoin. I say, I'm going to send it to Mikey Bitcoin. Well, How does my to... ledger device know which protocol to send it to? Well, first of all, it can't be an identical protocol on the same blockchain. It just can't. Because then it would be our protocol. It would be our protocol. Because then our client would resolve it. Uh, so, you know, then it, it would, it would adhere to our protocol basically. So I think what you're saying is like, if you own the top level spaces or you own Drew at spaces, why can't somebody, uh, create an uh, exact similar protocol where somebody else could register, um, Bitcoin, the top level Bitcoin, Yeah, mm-hmm. but they can't, if it was the exact same protocol, it wouldn't allow it because it's already registered. It would see, unless you start it, you know, it'd be a slightly different. Let's, I think what you're saying is that it's a slightly different protocol. Instead, yeah. of, is, instead of starting at block, you know, one that is, they started at, a, at another block. And so they can register another, they can register yeah. another at exactly. the point. Yeah. Well, if, I mean, if nobody knows, it's, it's the same thing with Bitcoin. It's like, if nobody knows about this protocol, nobody cares about this protocol. If Bitcoin spaces is the standard, it's the one that's used by everybody. You said it was adopted by everybody. It's adopted by all the wallet software. Trezor has adopted there, it. There in, there's your Achilles heels precisely there. The only way that this becomes feasible is if you go to all of the wallets and you, this is the standard. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with Bitcoin. Right? Because like, again, you haven't really addressed my concern, which is, okay, sure. There is a, there's a window there for you to become a standard in the yeah. sense there is a do- you're an adopted standard, but you're not, you're not, there's nothing, there's no moat around you being the standard other than adoption. Okay. Yeah. Somebody can still create another protocol started at a different block, a different point in time. Yes. And still have that at Bitcoin syntax. Yeah. And I don't know what's going to differentiate where the money goes. But it's the same with Bitcoin. Like somebody could create but somebody could create another Bitcoin. Because each Bitcoin address is a hundred percent unique. Nobody can create like it's not unique. I could well, create there a are identical addresses for, let's say, Bitcoin Cash, right? So yeah, if I go to a yeah. blockchain explorer, I can enter my Bitcoin address. It's because, well, do you want to check it on Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash? Yeah. Right? So what what's not to stop Bitcoin Cash from becoming number one? And like, like, so I think your argument could be applied. No, 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 no. No. If I, again, if I want to send, if I pull a Bitcoin, if I go to my wallet and I want to send a Bitcoin, yeah. I can't send it to Bitcoin Cash. That's not even an option. 
Bitcoin no, Cash? Because the wallet, the wallet is defaulting to what is known now as Bitcoin, right? And it's the idea that the adoption right now for Bitcoin is so broad that there aren't mistakes made between Bitcoin. No, and no, it actually, I think there is no adoption. Let's just say we fork on this call. We fork Bitcoin right now, okay? And we got Mikey Coin. If I want to send a Mikey Coin, I can't send Bitcoin to Mikey Coin. I can't send Mikey Coin to Bitcoin. I think Even if they have the same you... wallet address, doesn't fucking matter. They can have yes. the exact same syntax for wallet addresses, but they're on different chains. Okay, I got what you're saying. Okay, so Mike, but yeah, what I'm saying is you could have diff- different protocols on the same chain. This is ultimately the problem, you know. Ethereum has is like there's nothing stopping me from wanting a new dot e on Ethereum, and then I don't know if somebody wants to send, you know, money. Eh, like there's no way to force it without you know, being a little bit sophisticated and saying, I want to send it over this protocol into this wallet provider or over this network. Um, there's no way to force it into a particular protocol. Uh, yeah, I think in my I'm mind, not, maybe what I'm not, I, I'm probably not explaining it well. I'm not like great. I think I'm not explaining it well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a whole bunch of people not explaining themselves properly. No, it's uh but go ahead, Mike. I think that, and maybe it's just me, you know, like, you know, uh blockchain for dummies or whatever, but I guess the point, and, and if I'm somebody who's going to use spaces as a, you know, an identifier or get a subspace, if you will. Right. And I want to make sure that I'm not sending, you know, having people send money to somebody else instead of me. What prevents that from happening? Is it is it wallet integrations? Is it making sure that Ledger, Trezor, anybody else that's using wallet, like that those that it's you know, is it is it gonna be a drop down menu almost like where you're trying to pick the chain? Right now you have base, right? And you're trying to move ETH to base and bridge it and you can send it from coin, you know, whatever, and like you have to go to the drop down menu and make sure you're picking the right chain of where you want to send this to. Is it going to be like that with multiple options, potentially with competitors? I mean, is it the goal for you guys to be first and the best so that it's just sort of a known thing that spaces is spaces and all this other stuff are just ankle biting competition? So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, there's no number one. There's So in my view, this is going to happen. There's going to be a naming system people because we need it like there's going to be a decentralized naming system it's just so valuable it's inevitable it's not there yet there's no like standard number one thing that everybody uses so yeah our our goal is to try to be become that one and once you're that one you know i mean maybe there'll yeah there'll be other ones too like maybe when you're sending bitcoin it'll say you know space you know it'll default to spaces but then it'll allow you to choose ens too you know you can send it to an ens address it's it'll be similar to yeah exactly what you say it'll be similar to when you're on like coinbase or trezor or whatever and it's like do you 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 want to send you know where do you want to do you want to send bitcoin or do you want to send ethereum or do you want to send something else you know it'll, i think it'll be a similar drop down no, what network you, you want to send it yeah It'll yep. be something like, yeah. And I something. can, I, I haven't talked because I'm under so many NDAs. I'm constantly going through my brain of what I can say and what I can. I've literally been listening to the whole thing. But basically, what, God, I got I to gotta make sure. Basically, what people, nobody wants to have the same, right? So nobody wants to have at Bitcoin. What they're doing is changing the symbol to try and create their own and become. So we, we're in a trustless world, right? So we want trustless. But the reality is the people that become number one, whether it's uh, tokenizing things, whether it's naming, it's going to be the most trusted source. So right now, ENS is the most trusted on EF, on Ethereum. But if you want to differentiate yourself, you're going to just change a symbol. So if somebody wants to compete against Mike, they're going to come in and say, I'm now Mike X Bitcoin, and I'm a new standard. That's how you're going to differentiate how you send it. They're never going to come in and say, I'm Mike at Bitcoin, because it's just going to cause confusion. What they're going to sure, do. But that's computer- also a valid reason to act, meaning there are actors who are malicious that want to cause chaos. They want to. And so all I'm doing is I'm not yeah. saying that this is a problem today. Yeah. And I agree that the market incentive is for someone to say, oh, Oh, great idea, Mike, but I think I can do it better. I'm going to do this other protocol, right? 
And then whatever the market is going to be the market and whoever's going to win is going to win. Usually first, you know, first the market's going to win as long as they got, you know, in kind tech. So, um, so your chances are great, but there is the opportunity. And so all I'm trying to do is, is flush out in my mind, what prevents somebody from being malicious, coming in, creating a identical protocol that creates that confusion of, um, okay, so let's dig a little deeper. I'll ask this. Now, I, I could see in the future, like if this works and gained adoption, that there's an opportunity for like, you know, you to submit like a a a a, a, a bit and 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 you know, eventually this gets basically a mark coded into Bitcoin as the default naming protocol. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we are going to create a bit for this. So yeah, yeah so that is that. That is really that's that's the you know the answer you should have given in the wallet. So <laughs> that's, that's there you go. right. That, no, that a... ultimately then hard codes it as the default protocol. This is the now the default protocol for Bitcoin, you know, said and done, and the rest doesn't matter, right? Um, but until that happens, um Oh, and then it's a concern. Shane, yeah. you were going to say something? Yeah, so my question is this. So if I go to my leather wallet and I type in, who makes that? Is it on the chain? Hey, by the way, it's Bitcoin improvement uh, yeah. proposal. Okay. But so do the wallets make that choice? So if we're if we're sending to .eth and I go into MetaMask or if I go into leather wallet or whatever wallet and I type in Mike at Bitcoin, Who's making that choice that the wallet behind it is behind the name? Do they? Do, how does that flow through? How does a wallet, a company, or whatever you want to call it, how does that affect anything? What is what is their role in that? Yeah, is they, there a role? I mean, basically, it has to be implemented in the software in the wallet software. So they do that based. You know, it it all depends who the, maintains the wallet, but they could do it based on community input or like you know pull requests and like. You know, it, but conceivably, it could, you could go to all the Bitcoin wallets and say, "Please, let's make our protocol the standard." And once, once well, you're you know, in there, but you don't even have to say that. You just have to say, "Can you please resolve these addresses?" Yeah, yeah. that's it. Well, you know what's interesting is um, there was just a BIP created for Matt Crawl Crawler for uh, for wallet addresses for Bitcoin, like easy easy to remember wallet addresses for Bitcoin, which is the exact same thing. And what's interesting is he talks about in that, like, you know, we don't want to use an outside blockchain naming system like ENS, you know, that's outside of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, and there's nothing native to Bitcoin. So uh, we're going to use DNS, but like DNS, like, you know, that's the best option they have right now is DNS, which, you know, you're using, <clears throat> you're using a name that's centralized and keys are signed by somebody else. It's totally not cypherpunk, but it's the best solution that they have right now. And, and there's a bit for this right now. And people are really excited about it. And so, you know, I'm in that camp. I, I, I have moved from total decentralization. I think money needs to be completely and totally decentralized and information cannot be. Yeah, I, I'm a, so that's where we differ. Like, yeah. if, and one example I'll give is like dot cat, the top level domain dot cat. You know, the is there a dot cat? Were, oh, for Catalonia, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was raided. The offices were raided. The CEO was arrested for sedition because doc, there were some dot cat names posting stuff that were, you know, uh, anti Spanish government. So yeah. they were raided. You know, this is total like Bitcoin cypherpunk stuff. I, I, so like. I don't see how you can see that and like not uh, understand a need. It's like for freedom of speech, you need you know you need to have a name. You you need to have control of your name. It's like you don't want to ask permission. It's like do they permission like, is like somebody very tricky because I agree with you a hundred. I'm I, look. I am a freedom of speech maximus. Really like like really eh, 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 like at the moment I start here like this fucking guy Lula we're in Brazil right now like. That should be shot. Like it's crazy, craziness, absolute craziness. What's going on? I hundred percent believe in free speech. However, how do you balance that with things like kitty porn? How do you balance that with things like you know snuff videos? Like there's just some things 
that as a society, we have to accept our unacceptable and then build society forms around them. How do you balance that? They're not robots. And so when it comes to money, there should be no boundaries. However, when it comes to information, it's a very tricky, tricky line. There's a so very think, limited yeah, pool. Yeah, so Mike, what were you going to say? There's a very limited pool of information that should be censored, but it should be censored. So what you're saying is there should be somebody who says whether or not that the people of Catalonia should uh, say anything bad about the Spanish government. There should be, the, the no, Spanish government I'm has the right to silence. I'm saying that the there right is a extraordinarily them. narrow scope that we should agree on as human beings of what should be censored and everything else. But who is decide? But who decide? Again, society, like can, right? Like, so, so can, uh, through a consensus, there should be a consensus around what is, you know, like, Look, we are a community, a global community, uh, you know, whatever form of community you want to represent, whether it's a country, global, internet, domaining, wh- whatever community you, you, you want to discuss. Yeah, There's I, a consensus around what is acceptable and what isn't. And that's a societal norm that we've established. But you who know, should decide? Just like, just like should decide. driving on the right-hand side of the road versus the left, right? Who if we don't have a consensus, them? you're going to have a lot of fucking accidents. Right. Okay. We don't decide that people drive to the right and and you know that's just what we do. We're gonna have a lot of accidents, head-on collisions, right? Or you know, there's just these basic norms that have to be you know agreed upon as a society. And you know, I think this is one of them, in my opinion. Yeah, I I I personally think it's like money. Um where you shouldn't have to ask permission. Like I shouldn't have to go to the bank. Like I just bought a domain name and it exceeded the limits to do online. So I had to go to the bank and like, I had to ask the permission to you spend my money. Can I please spend my own money? You and, and I they're like, same thing. And they're, they're like, no, that, that, that they're like, no, come back. You have to come back. Like, yeah. I don't, it's you can't dangerous. do it. And so it's the same thing with a, with no, it's, name. it's not like, no, but listen, how do you, don't, how do you don't do have have ask permission. It I don't want, I don't want to have to ask the Spanish government, is it okay, please, can I use my name to publish information uh, that's, uh, you know, that expresses my views against you? And they're like, no, you know, I don't. I, so that's still, criminal on the part of the government, right? We have laws for that, right? So that's criminal on the part of the government. It, it needs to be dealt with. That's a problem. So that's, in Iran, that's, you know, if you post things in Iran, they can take Same thing, down. same thing. They're, like, that's a, that's a problem that needs to be dealt with, but not baked into a a, a a protocol but how so just to keep it as simple like how do you deal with child porn right for me that's you, like that's the that's you, the push it all the way out to the extreme that's the one that that's where i draw the line so you know everything else kind of you know whatever I mean, but like how do you deal with people paying bitcoin with paying for child porn with bitcoin you know like is it like how do you deal with that how do you well, deal with somebody buying? Well, and real quick, buying, let me. That, but that's the, it's a different thing because they're that's just a mechanism of payment. It's not the crime, right? Yeah. It's like I killed somebody. I used a hammer. We don't need to outlaw the hammer. We need to have you know. It's like well, it's the exact same thing with it's exact. No, same it's thing. not. Well, yes, it is. No, it's exact same thing. No, it's All exact right. same thing because it's just the name. They have the name. We're just doing the name, not the information stored under that name. That's them. That's the crime. It's the exact same thing. They just have the name. So we're just allowed but to- But the name is actually an address, and that address represents a server, and that's where that stuff is stored. And well, so we don't- pay, When you pay with Bitcoin, you're you're buying child porn. Like if you buy child porn with Bitcoin, you're sending it to somebody. I, mean, I, I, don't, I guess I don't see- the, No, but that's different. different. That's just a medium well, of- Well, hold paper. on real quick. Hold on, both of you for a second. Um, so- Bitcoin didn't exist. People would pay some other way. So if there are, you know, so if there are websites, if there are websites, t- where, where would those be hosted for in this system? So the, yeah. let's say the name itself is decentralized, so it's not touchable, right? So you can't, uh-huh. like you could do now on the existing domain name system, you can go to the registrar, go to the registry, go to ICANN and take action on the name itself, right? Not necessarily the host of the content. So in this case, where's the content hosted? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, you could host you could host it at an IP address, like a server, AWS, the same, like you could do it the same 
way that it's done now, or you could do an onion address, like a tour thing, which would be more privacy focused and like more decentralized because they wouldn't be able to pinpoint um, where the server is or who's hosting it and stuff like that. So it could, you know, it could be done a, a, a variety of ways, but, but yeah, I mean, um, and, and we don't have to, you know, like kind of stay on. No, this yeah, look, I'm but not trying that, to. But but, but last, yeah, but the point I want to make because we idea. we've talked we talked about this before when we talked about Web three domains, and I think to Drew's point, the reason that he's you know kind of harping on this is that he is and not to put words in your mouth, but you know you're basically saying, look, in order for these things to work and really become successful, you need adoption. In order to get real adoption, you know, you need to be able to get companies and you know people to want to utilize these things and in order for them to be able to do that you know you're not going to have some you know reputable companies that are going to necessarily want to have their stuff in the same bucket as you know kind of what becomes you know the 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 dark web right and it's like you know and and maybe that's never the intent but i think when we look at the way our business operates and dealing with high value premium domain names you know, so much of the straw that stirs the drink really comes from where the money comes from, which comes from big companies, big startups, you know, like funded, you know, entities, all that kind of stuff, which, you know, require a certain level of, uh, you know, call it housekeeping or control to be able to, you know, not be bundled into stuff that, you know, is, you know, very objectionable to, to call the normies, you know what I'm saying? So I think that becomes where some of this stuff starts to sort of bump into itself is that, at least the way that Drew's looking at it, which is, look, in order to really get adoption, in order to be successful, you need big adoption. In order to get real adoption, you know, some of these things become challenges that might not be overcomable if there aren't ways to sort of address things like child pornography and stuff like that. You know? And the, re- the reality is people do things because they want to be secure. The, the, the average person wants to be secure. If my daughter who lost her keys and has no keys to her car... In the Bitcoin world, that car now would be owned by the general public because she would have no keys. But she can go to the dealership and get a set of keys. And and that's a that's a comforting feeling. The reason you go to most people go to a bank, most people don't have over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They know that all their money is secure. The moment they feel it's not secure, they're gonna withdraw cash like the 20s and bring it to their home. On open sea, when people lost their monkeys. They cried like little babies for OpenSea to get their monkeys back because they were hacked. Everybody wanted decentralization until there was a problem. So the problem with a lot of this is people want freedom of speech. People want freedom of assets. People want things to move fast and quick and cheap until there's a problem. So that's what you have to, that's the big hurdle to me is providing security and freedom. How do you keep child pornography from showing up on my doorstep at the same time allowing me to talk about the government of catalonia those are the obstacles that i see and that's what we're trying to discover and 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 figure out this happy medium and i think that's where we're going to end up as a happy medium that's my opinion yeah, i agree with, yeah 100 percent. it's not like i'm i'm not saying you know forget i can't you know after this we're just all going to use bitcoin spaces like to me it's like um yeah it's like there's a need for spaces protocol in some cases and there's a need for i can in, in another so yeah i think it i think you're 100 percent correct like there's a it's just like there's a need for banks yeah you need like there's an and there's a need for bitcoin so yeah. yeah and the people that can bring this all together i think are the big winners what mike's doing is amazing and people want i know people want that Media Options is the industry's leading domain broker specializing in domain acquisitions, high value domain sales, and domain name consultation. As pioneers and thought leaders on the subject of the domain aftermarket and domain name value, plus through their clear domain acquisition service, Media Options offers startups and established corporations an unparalleled scope of high value domain options, providing access to domain names and curation technologies not available elsewhere. Media Options believes in the power of a great domain name and is dedicated to helping you obtain yours. Call or email today to put a domain to work for you. Did you talk to Aki Balaf at any of the BTC? Did you talk to Aki? A big he's he's a he built. Uh, I'm more into DeFi, so he took a Bitcoin and and made an NFT out of it, so it can be used on DeFi protocols like Bendow and Arcade. So you can take your Bitcoin, get a good loan about it, and he is your trustless source for doing that. And he found this buried in the Lightning white paper. So they had developed this this protocol 
for for turning Bitcoin into an NFT so you could loan it. Um, and he's a big thinker, just like yourself. Like he knows what people are looking for. But at the same time, he know he knew that there had to be a trusted source behind it. So if something went wrong, that he his company would be the trusted source to kind of bail out major errors. So there's a little bit of centralization built into it because he realized total decentralization just wouldn't fly. So you know that's that's well, where I think I see it. Yeah, and, and when you talk about wouldn't fly, and it's like depending on what you ultimately see is the you know the end result you're trying to get to. I think for people who are truly decentralization maxis, they're like, that's a y'all problem. Like I don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah. Like I, you know, I want to create the system to allow you guys to do what you want to do. It's going to do what it's going to do, and the limitations and the people that don't want to use it, and if that creates a, you know, a hurdle that won't be cleared, then so be it. Right. I think there's probably some of that, and I think to to Mike's point, and this is really also mirrors what Drew had even said on the Tim Ferriss podcast, which is when he was talking about the web three domains was like, was that there's a use, but it might not be the use of what people traditionally think of for domain names in general. Right. And, and that there doesn't mean that there is not a need or a, d a demand, but you know, it's, it'll be interesting to see how some of that plays out and look, and we're at the very early stages of this. I mean, I can't wait to see how this develops Mike, like over time. And as you guys start to do the things you're doing and, I think that if there's anyone that's going to make this work, it's going to be you. So I think it's just, it's, it's pretty awesome overall, but anyway, thanks. I'm trying to put words in your mouth or anything, but I'm just trying and to, I, and I'll, this is, this is, this is, I've known Mike now for 17 years. <laughs> we met in 2007 and we've talked about this on previous podcasts. We met, he was known as ugly Mike back in the day and he was creating, um, what trading programs, right? We try to yeah. do, Right, trading mm -hmm. programs to trade. We we traded together, put some money into a program, and let it loose. Come home at the end of the day, and we're like, "Shit, uh, we we lost the whole entire bankroll. Let's start again." So, but it, you know, Mike is a big thinker. He's he's you know generally one of the nicest guys. You as you can tell from this podcast, he's very calm and and polite. But at the same time, he's always thinking of what can be, and those. Those are the kind of people you want to hang. When he started Park, I, you know, I look up and I go, "What the fuck? That's you, Mike, doing that?" Goes, oh yeah, this is this is an opportunity of building. And he picked .io, right? Just like he's doing Bitcoin. He thought .io represented technology, and that why not? Why can't .io? .io owes everything to Mike. He's the one who built it. He's the one who pushed it. He's the one who set up the protocols, the platforms, the quick and easy ability to acquire names and sell names. So. I know. I mean, that really, you were the one that brought AI to the market in the end. I mean, there was yeah, no you know, way. You know, I the guy who was running the registry, Vince, he was yeah. running it from a flat file, like a, and I, yeah, yeah so I got him. The whole auction it. platform, you built it, right? Yeah, the auction, yeah. The auction platform, yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But, no, I mean, I know I sound combative. That's just the nature of my voice. No, no, no. Those are your questions or my questions. I too. literally think if there was a single person that I would trust and want building a naming protocol on Bitcoin, it might. And so, like, really, I'm just, you know, kind of pressure testing and trying to gain a better understanding myself. Um, I, I do have some reservations about just fully decentralized or, or let's say blockchain naming um, in general, um, at least in certain domains to be. Uh, but. Um, uh, and it's not a threat. Think, like we're not I, worried I about it being. I fully understand the need. And I think that going about it through a bit is the right approach because. The one that gets accepted is the one that will become the standard, and that's amazing. We need that. That's it, there's a utility. It's a clear utility. It needs to be done. It needs to be native. And um, yeah, I, I hope Space is is the one. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, to to be honest with you guys, like, I don't really like. I don't care that much about like the success of this or adoption like to you're me just, this is just a freaking hacker builder you're one of these people <laughs> I, mean, I can't understand in the world that just like <laughs> let me make more work for myself and i don't even know uh, you know like i don't actually care about the outcome or like the money i mean you gotta work 
you got to work on something, right? And it's like, this is the f- funnest like problem to try to solve for me. It's like, so I'm- I like working on my tan personally. <laughs> but this is the, this is why He's Steve and him made such a yeah. great partnership and such a, you know, I can understand at the same time, you know, Steve is kind of the opposite in a lot of cases where he has a list of all the things he wants to do. He has kind of the target goals and some revenue. And Mike's like, I just want to build shit. And Steve's like, ah. Oh. But, Big shout out to Steve Webb, by the way. Steve Big Webb, great, great guy. And that's why I, I love you too. Is But at the same time, I can see how Steve would be frustrated because you're like, I don't care if we make any money. He's like, well, we kind of would like to make some money because we'd like to pay for things. And you're like, yeah, we like the I don't care. As long as Bitcoin's going up, we got enough money to do it. And he's like, no, nah, that's not really how businesses work. We kind of need revenue. And I, well, and I know, love it. You know, this is a big lesson I learned. Like with Park.io, I learned this lesson. Um, and you know, they say like, there's some people who say you don't learn anything from success. You learn from failure. I, I know you learn from failure, but you also learn from success, which I did from Park.io. And the one thing I learned from Park.io is that like before that, I had always like when I was starting something, it was like, I got to make money. How am I going to make this make Like I, I want to make money, you know, or like I want to do some. And with Park.io, it was not that at all. It was like, this is cool. Like, oh, these names expire. I got to figure this out. I got to, and it was like, just fun. I didn't know how I was going to make money. And it was just like, this is fun and interesting. I, I'm going to work on this uh, with an open mind to maybe it could make money. And so then I, what I learned from that is the best thing for me. And this is why I'm working on this too, is like, the best thing is just work on what you're interested in, what you like, because in the end, if it fails, at least you t- worked on something you like. But I think it has the best chance of being a financial success is because you put that passion into it and stuff, you know, and you love it. And you, if you love something, you're going to work a little harder and like really. So yeah, that's, that's my philosophy. That's, well, what, that's what I tell Steve. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, hey man, no, it's all good. There's something to be said for that. Look, smart people following their passion. I, I mean, you're never really going to go wrong, wrong with that, you know, unless you're off on some, and, and I just feel like anything that's being built right now within the Bitcoin ecosystem, you know, to me, that's of course the better bet than almost any of this other stuff that we're talking about. Right. And it's not like, and the market cap speaks for itself and the amount of money and stuff that's involved and the potential of this stuff is amazing. So I think it's all good. And I do think that it's, look, it's, you know, I mean, Drew, I don't think you sounded combative. I think these are things that you've talked about on prior episodes about similar types of things. I think that, you know, this whole episode was kind of born from the idea that you and Mike. To be clear though, I'm far more intrigued and open-minded about this because it's on Bitcoin. Right. Okay. And, well, and that's, yeah, that's I'm what I'm saying. About on blockchain, not trying to, you know, be a whatever, right. The, all the other, everything else is just. Well, and let's be clear too. Um, I, mean, I, should, I, I probably should have stated this even at the outset, but you know, the purpose of the reason the show came about with bringing Mike on to talk about this specific stuff was that you and Mike connected and he was starting to tell you about what he was doing. And you were like, yo, this is so well, interesting. Mike and I have connected. For many, 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 many moons. No, no, um, you guys have been down for a while. We've no, been well, on the on. same page for a very long time on really all of this stuff. We've been, you know, rapping about Bitcoin for for many. Oh, well, months. that's why I said you guys are uh, on the same group chats and stuff. You guys, you know, you're part of the same. We just never managed to link up over the last couple of months because I was traveling and whatnot about this protocol. Um, and I thought this was a great opportunity to, you know, for him to educate you know, all of us, um, and meet exactly. in real time and get some clarity on, on what it is he's building. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get my name, you know? So, um, you know. So yeah. So let's talk that when, when, So when are you going live? When will people will, like go register a space? Yeah. So testnet's going to be like in the next couple of weeks, we're going to launch on testnet and then do testing. And depending on that, it'll probably be a month or two after that I, I guess so maybe the end of may or june around that time but it will announce it you know it'll be announced and stuff but then it'll go live on mainnet and uh yeah i mean the top level spaces are going to be kind of rare you know i mean there's only going to be like 3600 i think a year so um right. oh, so that, you're going to have a slow trickle like basically this well, it's gonna 10 be- a day it's only 10 a day they go to auction based yeah. have the highest bids and yeah. um uh, Will you do single letter and single number and all that stuff too? Wait, so yeah. how do you determine what gets released 
It's market based. We Whatever has the high. highest bids, the ten highest yeah, the, bids every day. Yeah, the ten highest bids every day. Out of a twenty four hour window. No, no. Then no they, more bidding. So and they make a climb. No, nope, well, so no. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah. So it's 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 the ten highest bids every day go to the ten day auction, mm-hmm. and then at the end of that auction, then yeah, those names are registered. Ah, so you almost have to throw up a proxy bid in advance just to qualify for the auction it. if there's a demand in the beginning or actually just to even no. like surface that name like yo i want this thing to come out i need to throw a serious bid on and just to get into go to auction and what right. happens That's to the uh winning money when the burning it, where right? where do those did that does that get burned yeah, or does that's that a go good... to the community wallet? <laughs> that's a good why you be why would anybody you talk about Bitcoin? Don't burn that shit. Yeah, burn, right. it's it's He's burned, burn it. man. It's He's burned. Burn it. yeah. It's totally it, burned. How are you big... gonna draw me how are you gonna draw me coin? People are paying like, in Bitcoin? I assume the only way to bid is Bitcoin. Yeah, the only way to bid is Bitcoin, it gets burned. And you're gonna burn it? It's burn, burn it, baby. Burn, baby, burn. Oh, All of it like Bitcoin is not a good idea. It's That's a very cleanest, bad idea. Don't do that. It's the cleanest <laughs> way. <laughs> it's the no, cleanest. I don't even mean it from like a greedy perspective. Like, I mean, technically, as a Bitcoin owner, yeah, you love burning it. Bitcoin is great for us. It's like, you know, stock buyback, right? It's like a company yeah. buying back in stock with an yeah. inability to produce more stock. But I do believe that um, actually one of the biggest risks to Bitcoin is that literally we're just going to lose oh, no. too much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Really? Well, uh, yeah. a class. Look out 20 years. We need more, you know, we, we don't need more Bitcoin, but we don't want to be burning a whole bunch of fucking Bitcoin. You know, I don't mind you know, burn the shit out of ETH. It's just worthless. But it's, Bitcoin, it's, like, you know, even, literally, Sat- even, even Satoshi said, you know, lost Bitcoin is a donation to all, uh, sure. all Bitcoin holders. Sure. I mean, it's, but I don't think it cleanest, should be encouraged. It's the cleanest way to, it's the cleanest. And most cypherpunk decentralized way to do it. And, you know. No, redistribute it. Redistribute it. You're wasting an incentive mechanism. There's, there isn't. What's the, what's the way to do it? We thought about sending it to miners, giving it to miners, but uh, then there becomes issues where the miners could tamper with the auctions and stuff like that. So um, the cleanest, you know, and I, I've gone to, I've talked with these Bitcoin core developers at these things and they, they agree that it's the cleanest way. I mean, I, I know people have an initial reaction. They're like, it's, I think it's the word burn in Bitcoin. No, no, no. You just have to burn, destroy, burn, eliminate. Burn. Burn. Bitcoin is burn. I might yeah. use that as the title of the show. It's just let, it's just, <laughs> that Bitcoin is gone, never to come back. And that's, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that. Either but, that or total eclipse of the coin. What about, <laughs> what about, what about, what about, um, why don't, you create a DAO? why don't you create like a DAO that has marketing, you know, it does marketing, it does adoption, you know, creates, it just, maybe it's a DAO that its only purpose is to provide grants for adoption. No, nah, it's not, it's not, um, it's well, not the paper's already been written, right? I mean, this is, uh, or the, <laughs> I mean, or things distributed can... to distributed to existing, you know, um, distributed to existing spaces, top level. I mean, if you I think just about it, my wallet. wallets. So whichever wallets own the top level spaces, um, just do equal distribution among them, right? So, but but, but true, thirty six hundred, thirty six hundred wallets are going to get you know, it's going to rain. You know what I'm saying? Pretty cool. That's a. I. I mean, I know that's not. The I, I mean, that incentivizes people to potentially to continue be, to get get yeah to continue to you know register them like, and you're going to incentivize adoption much faster. And I don't see a conflict there. You're just redistributing. Like okay, so I bid. You know, let's say one one bitcoin to get dot. Whatever. Okay. So at, I get at, dot at, at, whatever. At, at, okay. At, yeah. At whatever. Okay. I get at whatever. And I bid one Bitcoin for it, okay? Instead of burning that, that one Bitcoin gets redistributed to the 3,600 or 7,200 or whatever number of wallets, you know, uh, 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 top-level spaces exist at that moment in time, automatic redistribution, equal weighting among all those wallets. 
I mean, it, it's a, it's an interesting idea, but I think it's um, it would perfect. Add, it would add complexity and uh, could add security risks and doesn't um, add much complexity. That's an easy function. Drew's basically <laughs> trying to. If he gets you to agree to this, then you know he's going to be buying ten of these a day. He'll be the he'll be the no, guy. Listen, I'm telling you, I really, I don't, I don't. I'm the least technical person ever. Okay? It, it'll game a five. Like, technically it'll retarded. A little bit. Yeah. And retarded it, in the appropriate use of the word. Like I am literally technically retarded. <laughs> I literally like, I don't know, but the one thing I do have is very, very good instincts. I have very good instincts for what works and what does it and what's going to catch and what is it. I don't know why. Don't have an explanation for it. But my track record speaks for itself. The moment you start telling me that the bid, all the money that's being bid for these things is going to be burned, I start thinking this is shit coin territory. Okay. This, if you're creating something of value, no element of it should be wasted. And I don't, but nothing. I, don't, I think you're thinking about it. I know it's not technically wasted. I understand. It's not wasted at all. I know, because- I know, but it is, it is, it's not the highest and best use case for that Bitcoin. I mean, in you're essence, really offending. You're offending Drew's capitalistic sense. In essence, by, you're yeah. doing a minuscule. Basically, in essence, what you're doing is a minuscule share buyback for the entire Bitcoin network, as opposed to a dividend being paid to the participants, you, the, the participants of your protocol on the Bitcoin network. Yeah, that's I, the I think difference. Actually, is a very good point, but. You know, we're yeah i mean we're uh, that's like it's like kind of like okay berkshire <laughs> hathaway instead instead of using instead of berkshire hathaway using it well they don't do buybacks but let's say let's say apple okay instead of apple utilizing its earnings to buy back shares uh uh to pay a dividend to its investors it's going to donate that money to the fucking nasdaq and then the nasdaq is going to distribute the earnings of apple to all the fucking uh uh owner you know all of the stockholders of all of the companies of nasdaq and it's like what the fuck or they said have another way it's like instead of the share buyback for all the shareholders you give the share buybacks for the people who actually bought iphones you know and um but um but yeah interesting stuff man i think super cool we don't have a whole lot of time so and um but I guess Rethink so, burn. Yeah. is that even an option though? Like you lost me at the burn. I mean, it, it would be, it would change a lot, a lot of things and add complexity and security risks. And, and honestly, I don't know if it's, Why would I, because well, the key the is way, to do it like ENS and not announce it and just don't say anything. Yeah. And, and don't make it an entitlement. It's not an entitlement. It's just, let, a, let it's it go just through what it is. is. And then, and then you know, one day it might not be what it is, but it just is what it is for now. And then, you know, Mike's like, I don't think you need to make any guarantees. I don't think you need to make any guarantees. I don't think you need to make promises. There's no thing about, you know, I, I don't think you're adding a lot of complexity. Technically, it's not a, it's you're not adding much complexity. Well, it is actually because the way that the auction system is done, like it's, you do a partially signed Bitcoin transaction. So the mm-hmm. person who places the second bid pays back the first person's bid. So yeah. like if you bid, if you bid one Bitcoin for at Bitcoin, that gets burned. That one Bitcoin's burned. But then if somebody bids 1.5 Bitcoin, they send you back your bid, one Bitcoin. They send that to you with the partially signed Bitcoin transaction that you created. And Bro, then they burn we need it. to talk off one. What you described me <laughs> is a one legged version of like of of you know the GBM auctions. Yeah, but there's but the difference is nobody's winning here, Drew. I know what you're saying. You're not getting paid here. You're just yeah. That's you, why it's like you you you're, you're literally you're one step away from creating something that's amazing. <laughs> one step. Yeah, no, really. Because <laughs> it's oh, this massive. Inc- it's like there's this massive incentive mechanism in front of you, and you're like, eh, kick it in the sewer. <laughs> he already said he's not interested in making money so <laughs> well but no what drew's saying i mean is, I, it's not about making I'm, money it's about distributing it in a way that creates this like i mean the momentum that stronger i mean i'm open to the idea the network. 
I'll run it by the, you know, my co-founder, but like, I, I, I'm not optimistic that it's, that we could do something like that. But I mean, I think, you know, it's, I'll, I'm open. Dude, you're it. talking about burning a lot of fucking Bitcoin because yeah. if every, if the way you're describing this bidding thing is like, you're making my head hurt. If I'm bidding, I'm bidding a Bitcoin and then I get outbid, my Bitcoin gets burnt. Oh and wait! He, all the bidders Bitcoin. lose their Bitcoin. Now two Bitcoins no, get no, burned. No, no, no. It's only the winner. Only the winner. Only the winner yeah, loses the Bitcoin. Only the winner. Yeah. So you no. To, no they they talk, only, each incremental bit gets burned once yeah. it gets outbid. Yeah, but he's yeah. giving back to the original burner. Right? Yeah. yeah, but the Bitcoin itself is lost. I don't give a fuck about the guy who lost it. I care about the Bitcoin itself. But the total Bitcoin burned only adds up to the final bid. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Yeah, so you, that could be a lot. So I bid a Bitcoin, <laughs> you bid two, he bids three, Mike bids five. So but maybe the, five, the, but the winner, the the winner wins at 10, then 10 is what gets burned. 10 yeah. is all the total burned is 10. It's just done in increments along the bid as it goes yeah. up the ladder. He's just talking yeah. more of the logistics of the coins. process. <laughs> it is a lot of it. That means every day, what is it, 10 a day? Yeah. Yeah, 10 auctions a day. Every yeah. day. I'm going long Bitcoin because we're every day be ten Bitcoin. auctions. It's gonna be like yeah, you know, no Bitcoin left out. My Bitcoin. yeah, imagine the price of Bitcoin. Imagine yeah, the price just go ahead and go Bitcoin. long Bitcoin. Thank you can thank Carson. Like call it Carson <laughs> effect. Did you hear about like, the Carson effect? Super, this is you know, this is let me tell my kid. Yeah, we had this great thing called Bitcoin, and then this dude Mike he created this system whereby we destroyed all of them. They were all gone. <laughs> Only Michael well, we had, Saylor. Well, we had that, Bitcoin domain names. <laughs> and actually, cool. <laughs> BlackRock and Sailor have all of them. It's yeah, the Winklevoss, BlackRock, and Sailor have all but three bitcoins. Dude, don't everybody do this. else has the names. This is a no very bad idea. The whole idea is great up until the burning thing. That needs to be changed. Take the burn and turn it into an incentive mechanism. Maybe we'll think about it. I think we'll there's definitely I something the, to be talked about there, though. Yeah, yeah, and I think the less incentive, the less prices will be burned. See what I mean? I think this is. If you incentivize it, obviously the prices are going to be higher. You know, what you're talking about is also that it just means less adoption, right? Because more adoption means price goes up, right? No, so it's true. If you want adoption, then incentivize it's like, it. It's like, yeah. let me create a great outcome, but with no incentive. Well, you know, catch 22. Yeah. You, you know, you yeah. can't. Well, I, mean, I think there is. I mean, you know, as well as I do, that rarity of names creates incentive in itself. I no, mean, what are you talking about? No, it's, not on the no, blockchain. No, it doesn't. Utility creates the incentive. Hey, when you uh, so once I, own, not once I win, real quick, so once I win, the 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 top level well, spaces then need to be renewed or something. Is that the deal? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and if they and what are the and the renewal fees get burned too? Yeah, <laughs> it's a transact. No, it's a transaction, so it goes to the miner. Okay. It's just a transaction. Yeah. And how much are the renewal fees? Like, what are they? How are it's they? just, it's only a transaction fee. So it's really small. Like, it's Minimal, just, okay. you just pay a transaction. Yeah. Well, you, and you'll have to proactively go in there and renew. Like, you know, you're not going to get renewal notices, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, you unless stuff, you don't get, yeah. Very yeah. Central, it sounds yeah. centralized. But if you're running a uh, subspaces, like, as part of that process, it renews. Oh, you it. Won't. So, yeah. So, like, you don't, really have to worry about it then but oh, that's yeah. good i actually think that's helpful i lost an ens name because i just wasn't being like oh hey let me go in there and remember to do that i think it's super messed up like when i bought ens names there was no renewals <laughs> and then i lost all of them because they introduced renewals and i it, and whatever yeah but, the whole um, thing is a crock of shit the whole <laughs> it's really like <laughs> ens right. was like a great technology but it's like the whole theory of blockchain is like a freaking dumpster fire. <laughs> it's a bit of a mess. So, but um, anyway, all right. Well, look, we covered a lot of ground. I just, um, for the record, I just, I just converted the very last of my Ethereum into Bitcoin the other day. When I hit 0. 0.048, I was like, all right, that's it. It's getting one step closer to zero. I mean, I'm, I'm out. Yeah, like I, the, I did that too. One or the other. But, um, all right. Well, I did want to talk a little bit about runes and ordinals and those kinds of things, but you know, as they're building popularity, I, I, let me just, let's just spend maybe five minutes and just are are you guys involved? I know in like, nothing. Are, are you buying any NFT stuff like in, inscription ordinal type stuff on Bitcoin at the moment? Are you doing any of that? I 
I'm not buying anything. I, I inscribed uh, some stuff early on just to check it out. I, I did some ordinals. Um, but, uh, you know, I think this, this opened up a, you know, a new thing for Bitcoin. The way I see Bitcoin now with this ordinals and with this naming Bitcoin spaces and stuff is the way I see it now is like the true value of Bitcoin blockchain is the space, the block space. 100%. Like that's, that's the stuff that is, um, the space on the blockchain is what's so valuable because it's what's secured with all that energy in the world and stuff. And so the, so the, so the killer app for Bitcoin, the first killer app for Bitcoin was money, like having that, cause that's so important. Having that on the block space is the, the first killer app, but you know, this Ornos thing. And I think, I think naming could be the second killer app. You know, like that. So basically that namespace is so valuable. It's so, you know, it's, it's a trust, it's trustless, like, and it's so secure, decentralized that ledger that, um, you know, killer app and the other killer apps can be built for it too. And I think naming is a, you know, is a great thing to be anchored in that block space. So that's, yeah. So ordinals, you know, that's another thing that is in that's a it's another app kind of like another app that's built for that block space and it's you know it's some people like it and some you know it's speculative and stuff and you can uh make a lot of money or you could lose money but for me i i don't you know i don't see a lot of use i'm not using it a lot i mean i inscribed a couple of things but i think yeah i think naming could be another one well naming i believe yeah, there's, I, I, you know, there's more you. utility I think, I, I, in naming obviously yeah and then, the NFT stuff is collectibles, right? And then it's the same thing we saw. In, no, know, but it like, doesn't have to be. This is where people don't understand what an NFT is, right? So um, it doesn't I'm have talking, to be. I'm talking specifically about like runes, node monkeys, Bitcoin puppets, sure. like the stuff that are the what These are the P, collectible. PFP stuff that, you know, yeah. is similar to what we saw. I don't like it, but I also don't um, have any problem with it, right? Like, so I think that, Bitcoin ultimately is the ultimate free market and that anybody who's willing to spend their money to inscribe something in the block space, the limited block space, um, has the right to do so. Great. Go for it. Right. And so ultimately, when all of the Bitcoin rewards are expelled, like Miners need to get paid to keep the blockchain secure. And I think that this is the 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 the, the utility of this ultra hard immutable block space that has permanence is extraordinarily valuable. In fact, I don't think that we are assigning appropriate value to it today. And I think that there I I'm not technical enough to understand how, but I I I do think that there's you know, the, the way we're doing it now is probably not ideal. Um, utilizing this sort of like, I don't know, this, this signature space from, from SegWit. Like, I, I don't know. Anyways, but I think that there is a world in the future where there's going to be very important data, uh, even history, right? Like, you know, we have this saying that history is written by the winners of war. And um, it doesn't necessarily reflect what actually happened. And if there's one thing that I think about in terms of Bitcoin, it's it's reality, right? There's no nothing fake in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is is real time, real energy. Everything about it is real. And so I think that there's you know uh, ways in which we're going to use that block space in, space in the future that have nothing to do with JPEGs. I don't think JPEGs really makes sense but i think they're a really good way to get people to start understanding and thinking about oh there's what this is is bitcoin itself isn't just it's not money that's not what bitcoin is bitcoin is an illegible uh, immutable ledger permanent immutable ledger that can be used for basically anything and money happens to be the highest and best use case but there are other utilities and yeah, it's and Mike, Mike said, just, yeah, Mike, like Mike said, Mike said money was the killer app, right? Was the one that yeah. you know, was the first. And and that's why. All right. Again, pushing up on time. I hear what you're saying. And I do. I think like birth certificates. I think like someone is born, their identity 
not their identity, but the fact that they exist should be inscribed on a blockchain, right? And that blockchain should be Bitcoin. Right? So I don't. What was the Segwit piece that allowed now for inscriptions and stuff like? So this was a basically a Bitcoin network update that allowed these things to be, you know, for the expansion sort of the utility. Is that what happened? Yeah, like so you could store more data in like okay. the witness data. So yeah. And Shane, you were going to say something? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm an investor in like receipts.xyz where we're taking, you know, you should own your data, right? Like it, this isn't Bitcoin per se, but in general, we keep, in, in this case, it's exercise. We're out running every day. What do we do? We give it to Strava, we give it to Garmin, we give it to everybody else, we give it to Apple. That should be ours. And we should be either leasing it out or giving it out to people and or our doctors we should have the choice of our data and we should control all that but the problem on different chains is the cost of that transaction and how fast it goes so there there are limitations on certain things and how quick you want it to go and how cost effective it is but but the ideas behind them are all the same right we should inscribe our information on the blockchain and we should control that and then we should allow who that goes to and sure. those kind of things. So I, I'm a I'm a big proponent of all that. The problem I have with blockchain is like I can't put a great looking picture right now. Like it costs me hundreds of thousands of dollars to put a beautiful photo on there. Right now it's it's bits and small. Like there's just that's why but that's good. Bitcoin. That's that's really not you know what you it's for. Need, it's, it's not what it's for, right? Yeah. And so all of these other chains, like I, I I just don't even know why they really want to pretend to be decentralized or why that's even really, you know, it's a, different like purpose. a limited it's a different amount purpose. of decentralization is good because it helps prevent fraud. Um, but like, I don't know, like most of the things that we're putting on blockchains, they don't need to be fully decentralized. Like it's, it's, yeah, hundred percent. That's, that's almost what the reason as despite all of the flaws of Solana, I, I, I kind of like Solana just because like it does everything really fast and really cheap. And, you know, it has a whole bunch of great functionality, but they don't really pretend to be decentralized. It's like, no, we're corporate chain. It's, like same with Coinbase, like base is doing a good chain, job right? of the same thing. Base has yeah. done a, I mean, I, I hate the Coinbase made the chain or whatever you want to call it, yeah. but it is very functional. It's a very functional. It has a, hasn't really had too many problems. And as far as moving data, storing data, it's been pretty good. And it's cheap as shit. Like it literally is pennies on the dollar to make it happen. So everything has a different purpose, right? We're all, they all have different roles and different, um, you know, different. But nobody should confuse for. any of these other things for money, right? That, that's no, just, 100%. that's silly. That's, that's just silliness. Yeah. I don't even. Yeah, I don't think of base as an investment. I think of base as a technology to allow me to transfer data and build stuff. It's like and that's the way to think about it. That's the way like Farcaster. Farcaster. Yeah. I don't know if you participate, Mike, in Farcaster or Warpcast. It's a, the alternative to Twitter. It's it's built by the people. It's for the people, by the people. They're building frames and building things behind it. It's very interesting and amazing to watch it happen in live time now they're using the incentive incentivized approach where you get dj and you get money and you tip people for good post which will be gamed and people will give it back and forth but in general the purpose behind it is for the people to build stuff and then people pay people so it's i love watching it i love all this thing coming together and um again it's not completely decentralized but it is much more freedom than nor should it be or doesn't need to be <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It just Mike will differ on that, but I'm pretending. I, like I didn't stop him stuff is pretending. Like that's why I use the word sandbox all the time. We want this beautiful giant sandbox of decentralization, but on the outside, daddy's watching to make sure nobody gets hurt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. JT, you're on mute. Yep, I realize. Um, all right. Well, we are officially over time. Um, so but I think we covered a lot of ground. I thought this was great. Um, Mike, anything else on your end? I mean, is just kind of any closing thoughts with anything? I know we've covered a lot. Are you going and... to Dubai here in a couple weeks to go? Nah. To You're Are missing you 2049. Con? No, it's called like, uh, what's it called? Something 2049. It's a huge uh, uh, yeah. blockchain conference. 
I don't know. I've done a lot of traveling recently. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you travel have you the spoken equipment. to the guys over at three, uh, D3? What's that? Have you spoken to the guys at D3? No, I don't think so. You should. Yeah, that's a... We can... Blind and I'll, I'll make an intro. But you traveled for the eclipse, right? Yeah, <laughs> eclipse, man. It's awesome. It's the first time I saw total totality. And it's, man, that's... I've never seen it. I've never seen a total of solar eclipse. It's, it's, it you got to do... It's like a once... I mean, it's like one of those things that... It's like a wonder of the world. Like yeah, it's, it it's, is. It's, it's It's like looking up at a like a like a black hole in the sky or something and all the animals go crazy and like i mean it's insane it's cool yeah. i want to see i want to go to the next one i think i'm gonna have to I bet it must be cool. Cool. you were in like northern maine and you got that 100 percent totality and like you got moose and crazy animals yeah. around you know what i'm saying they were tripping you know they were tripping well that's what i said was an underrated thing i wasn't even thinking about was how it would impact nature being that you know it's such a jarring change and disruption to the normal flow of things. And just to uh, leave you with an interesting note is think about how messed up we are as human beings that it doesn't impact us more. Hmm. Right? That's yeah. how it's like well, you remember Apocalypto? Out. My favorite movie of all time was Apocalypto, and they got the guy on the top of the pyramid about to cut his head off, and then all of a sudden the totality eclipse comes over. And they're all like, what is going on? This is a sign from the gods. We should not kill this guy. We're going to let him go because we've never seen it. like, guys. you see, I'm God now. Can you imagine, <laughs> though, back in the day when they get a total eclipse like that, what they were thinking? That, and there's a reason yeah. that they believed in gods. Like, yeah. only God could do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, That's it what they kind, were thinking it's, back then. It's kind of a spiritual experience. Yeah. Should, it's in Spain in 2026. I'm going to go. Yeah, we Spain. should see if you know Spain and see where room. Lisbon is in the totality <laughs> thing, and maybe that's the move, you know. So, um, all right, well, cool. Look, I think on that note, uh, we'll shut it down. Again, we covered a ton of ground, Mike. Super awesome to hear what you're working on. I can't wait to see how it evolves. Um, totally. Can't wait to see where you land on the burning question. You know, <laughs> uh, which is a burning don't burn, question. man. Don't burn. The burn will be your downfall. And. Uh, <laughs> so um but no man super super cool stuff and uh you know appreciate you shane for taking the time and and drew as always and like i say to the audience you know on every show thank you guys so much for tuning in without you there is no us so uh you know with that we're going to say goodbye this being a rabbit hole like i say also fair farin which is the scottish phrase meaning good journey so may you travel far under fair skies and even further down deep dark rabbit holes Thanks, everybody. We'll see you all again soon. And uh, if you want to find us in the meantime, we're not hard to find. So, But otherwise, we'll see you all later here on Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. Peace out, everybody. Peace.